prominence here is the articular eminence. Also, if you look at the articular disc, posteriorly it is attached to the temporal bone by this retrodiscal tissue where you have a bilaminar zone. You can, can see this, this purple, purple structure that is what is holding the articular disc in place. And around it you have fat, you have fibroelastic tissue. Anteriorly, the lateral pterygoid muscle is closely attached to the articular disc area. So that is what is holding it in place and a part of it is attached to the mandible too. So basically you have the mandibular condyle which is rounded, articulating with the glenoid fossa of the temporal bone. So it's not right exactly in the glenoid fossa, it's slightly more anterior. And this here is the articular eminence. The main thing that we are evaluating is the articular disc. What is the shape? What is the size? Is it normal? And more importantly, what is its location? Now this is in closed mouth. What happens when somebody opens the mouth? You saw here, this is where this was located. On opening a mouth, the mandibular condyle moves anteriorly, but the articular disc still maintains its relation with the mandibular condyle. The retrodiscal tissues obviously get stretched while the lateral pterygoid would contract and pull this anteriorly. So this is in open mouth. And whenever we do temporomandibular joint study, it's essential to obtain the images in closed mouth as well as in open mouth because only then it's a complete study. Imaging radiographs, yes, you can use it more often for trauma, but otherwise for internal derangement does not really help. CT, yes, you can do it, but again, it's for trauma because you're not seeing the articular disc in it. So for internal derangement, if we are looking at temporomandibular joint, MRI is what we are looking at. Sequences. So again, the combination can be different, but what is important is look at the mandibular condyle and the sagittal images should be planned perpendicular to it. So sometimes what happens is, uh, I've seen people doing slices through only the right TM joint sagittal, a separate sequence through left joint, that's not really needed because you can plan, TM joint is a small structure. You can plan maybe 10, 12 sections here, 10, 12 sections here, there's not much of overlap. So one sequence itself, you can include both on sagittal. So axial image is where you begin with, followed by a corneal stir or more preferably I would say a corneal PD to try to look at the disc. But make sure there is one fat sat T2 or stir because you want to look for marrow changes, you want to look for joint effusion, you want to look for adjoining soft tissue. So any one plane, axial T2 fat sat or stir, fine. Other planes, PD. So corneal PD, SAG we obtain PD as well as T2. And this is non-fat sat I'm talking of. In closed mouth as well as in open mouth. Some people obtain cine images to see the movement that could also be done. You have these fast gradient images where you can see cine movement, but we don't do that. We obtain static images in open mouth, static images in closed mouth. Again, on open mouth, make sure that something is kept between the teeth so that the mouth remains open and there is no motion artifact. So just regular your distilled water things which you have, you can just wrap it in a gauze and keep it. Make sure that the technologist understands that mouth has to be open as much as the patient is able to open it. So let's look at normal and abnormal. This is the normal sagittal PD image. You can see the mandibular condyle well. You can see this articular disc here. It just looks like a knee meniscus. It's fibrous tissue, so it's dark. It has little kind of a bow tie like appearance. The normal position of an articular disc is the central portion is not above the mandibular condyle. It's the posterior portion. So how do I know whether it's normal or not? Look at this junction between the so again, the articular disc, if I look at it, it has an anterior band, it has a posterior band, both of which are thick, and it has an intermediate zone, which is a bit thinner. Look at the junction between the posterior band and the bi bilaminar zone, or the retrodiscal layer that we spoke of. That junction should be about 12 o'clock position with respect to the mandibular condyle. Up to 10 degree on either side is still okay you will find articles which say up to 30 degrees also normal. They have found from this, imagine this being vertical from here up to 30 degree also, it is normal. Articles say both 10 up to 30 because they have found that these patients are asymptomatic even though it's moved about 30 degree more anterior. So look at this posterior portion should be in the center but slight anterior is also fine enough. 
And you can see this retrodiscal layer or the bilaminar zone clearly. This is the lateral pterygoid. Now, this is normal closed mouth and this is normal open mouth. What do I see? This is the mandibular condyle. This here is the articular disc. And on open mouth, can you see? The mandibular condyle has moved ahead. And the articular disc still maintains its relation with the mandibular condyle. Now kind of the central portion is more in relation to the mandibular condyle. So this is normal closed mouth and normal open mouth. And these we are evaluating on sagittal images. Coronal images also on open and closed mouth you can see. But it's primarily sagittal we are imaging. You can have only lateral displacement of the disc but that's not very common. So what do we look for? First look at the position of the disc. Is it normal or is it displaced? Look at the shape and the intensity of the disc. Is it normal, deformed, degenerated? There is a perforation in it. Look for joint effusion and marrow edema. Look for changes of osteoarthrosis. Look at the retrodiscal tissue that I mentioned. And look at the lateral pterygoid muscle. So let's look at examples. Here on this closed mouth position, you can see the mandibular condyle. And you can see this disc is obviously dislocated anteriorly. So yes, there is disc displacement. The next question is, what happens on open mouth? Does this disc go back to its normal position with the mandibular condyle or does it not? So here in this open mouth position, you can see this disc here. It's a normal relation to the mandibular condyle. So this is anterior disc displacement with reduction. That means in closed mouth position, it was dislocated. In open mouth position, it has regained its that is because the retrodiscal tissue is still kind of maintained. Now this patient, and this is minor derangement. If this persists for long, these patients usually present with complaints of pain. They may have clicking, they may have difficulty in opening their mouths. If this persists for longer, the retrodiscal tissue which is there, because this persistently remains anterior, that gets very lax. And then this disc will not reduce back. We'll come to that. So another example. Clearly look at the mandibular condyle, look at the disc. It's significantly anterior to the mandibular condyle, there is disc dislocation. But look at this open mouth, you can clearly see the disc is now in normal relation to the mandibular condyle. This is disc displacement with reduction. This is where you have only lateral portion of the disc was displaced, not the medial portion. So if you look at the medial portion, it looks all fine. This is somewhere at around 12 o'clock, fine enough. But when you come more laterally, you can see that it is displaced anteriorly. So that can also happen. Sometimes only on the coronal image you can have lateral displacement of the disc. So make sure you look at all the planes. Look at this case now. Mandibular condyle, nothing here. This disc is clearly displaced anteriorly. So sometimes you get confused the lateral pterygoid attachment. Is that the disc or where is the disc? So look at this area. There is no normal disc at all. And this is displaced anteriorly. On opening the mouth, what is happening? That disc is not going back to its normal relation to mandibular condyle. It's remaining anterior. So this is disc displacement without reduction. That means a major derangement. Okay? How are these patients treated? Usually they are treated conservatively. There could be physical therapy, anti-inflammatory, painkillers, all of those. Surgery is done less often but can be done. And in fact, I have seen one case at least where they have done TM joint replacement. So just like you have knee replacement, hip replacement, they do TM joint replacement. They have to get a customized uh, implant which matched the initial size of the patient and then that is done. Another example again, this is the disc. Now you can see this disc looks degenerated. It doesn't look like dark like we saw earlier. But still the shape of it tells you that this is the disc and that there's nothing out here. This disc is displaced anteriorly and on open mouth, it is moving anteriorly, this mandibular condyle, but the disc still remains anterior and he's not able to fully open the mouth. So this is, so explain to the technologist as much as the patient is able to maximum try to do that. This is disc displacement without reduction. Next, look for changes of osteoarthrosis in the mandibular condyle. Once you looked at the disc position, all fine or not fine, look at the mandibular condyle. You may have small erosions. That's why I look at the non-fat-sat PD images for that. 
You may have subcondyl cyst uh, subarticular cystic changes. You may have subarticular sclerosis. So small erosions, osteophytes, cystic changes, sclerosis, all of these would suggest osteoarthrosis. Here, this patient had bilateral bad temporomandibular joints. You can see so much of sclerosis. You can see these erosions along the temporal. So somebody who has had chronic dysfunction would lead to osteoarthrosis. Retrodiscal layer, if it remains significantly hyperintense, it is a bit hyperintense always, but when it looks more hyperintense and you don't find any other cause of pain, that itself can be cause of pain because you can have hyperemia and inflammation in the retrodiscal soft tissue. Look at this disc. Position normal in open mouth and in closed mouth, closed mouth and open mouth, but sorry, this is right and this is left for comparison, I'm sorry. Look at this left articular disc, shape and all is fine. Can you see this right disc is significantly degenerated and there is a central perforation too. So the disc may be abnormal, shape and intensity. You can have fracture. For example, here in this patient, you have a fracture of the mandibular condyle here. Something called as parade ground or guardsman fracture. So people who are standing in parade for a long time due to the hot sun can get a syncope, fall straight on their chin. And you can have fractures of bilateral mandibular necks like you see here. So in these conditions also, they may ask for a TM joint study. This was a case of hypoplastic mandibular condyle. So there was no internal derangement. The position of the disc you can see is normal here. It's here at this location. In open mouth also normal. But the mandibular condyle itself, the shape was abnormal. It was small, so it was a hypoplastic mandibular condyle. And the patient did have complaints since childhood. Sometimes you may have ganglion asso associated with it. This was a patient with rheumatoid arthritis, so inflammatory arthritis can involve, you have synovitis, synovial thickening here, and there was an associated ganglion, so patient had pain and felt a swelling. The last thing I would uh, want to show is ankylosis. You may have these kind of appearance, there is sony classification, so it's very easy when you don't see these often, but when you see them, just look at this classification. So this is full osseous fusion. Here there is no exact shape. Here you have something which looks like a condyle, but rest of it looks like this. And this is how, so the cases we have seen, here we do CT rather than MR. CT we have done. You can see clearly this is type 2 here because you have this something rounded which looks like a condyle, but then rest of it is fused. And this was type 4, where there is complete osseous fusion. So do, we do get CT for these. So to conclude, what exactly do we look for? Look at the position of the disc in closed mouth, normal, abnormal. If displaced in closed mouth, in open mouth, is it going back to normal position or not? That means disc displacement with reduction or disc displacement without reduction. What happens when the patient is not able to open his mouth? So then we put it in the report that because the patient was not able to open the mouth, we are not able to assess the disposition in open mouth position. It's possible that somebody, there's so much pain, there is fibrosis, there is stuck disc that they're not able to open the mouth. Look for joint effusion, marrow edema, look for osteoarthrosis changes, look at retrodiscal tissue, and look at lateral pterygoid muscle. You, can, you may have edema there, you may have some scarring there. That's what we need to look at in temporomandibular joint.